everyone, welcome to another episode of D&D's Nozer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason, your host as usual. This is episode 17, and uh, we're very excited to be painting the gregarious and fun young brass dragon. Uh, from WizKids, of course, using Vallejo paint as usual. I just want to say hi to everyone in the chat. I want to make sure that everyone knows that we will be live on the chat. If you have any questions, comments, inquiry, inquiries... <laughs> Uh, if you've done this miniature before and you have some ideas about how to, um, any uh, technique ideas or color ideas or things that you did different, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, as well, um, we'll be taking some information about what you guys want to see painted next. So you can sound off in the chat as well as we go. Uh, we'll jump in right here after a couple announcements. First off, uh, if you missed our Kickstarter, it is not too late. If you go to realmsmith.tv slash Kickstarter, uh, you can check out some of the items that we have in our pre-order store. Uh, some of those items are only available to the 31st, which is Halloween. So uh, make sure that you jump in there if you haven't uh, checked out our Kickstarter yet and you would still like to, uh, you still have an opportunity to get involved, which we're very excited about. Um, other than that, we are back finally with Order of Dragon's Bane. Uh, tomorrow night, that is our live stream. Uh, we've been somewhat uh, behind in a couple of weeks, lots of travel and sickness and so on across our cast but we are committed to coming back on every week uh, and we're very excited to have everyone back at the table tomorrow night so that is tomorrow night 7 30 p.m eastern standard time um, on our twitch and youtube channels for uh, live D, D with um, the order of dragons bane make sure that you guys say hi in the chat so i know that you guys can hear me and everything is running well and then we will start from here um oh yeah Fragmite says he likes the Fomorian in the background here. Look at this. Uh, this is the guy that we did last uh, time around, last week. So check out that um, tutorial on our uh, Twitch channel. It's still on the Twitch channel, but we also have the... Um, sorry, the VOD will be going live on our YouTube channel as well as the uh, official D&D YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel, actually, we uploaded a bunch of the back episodes for you guys already you guys have been asking for those we've been a bit behind so uh, i want to make sure um, that we uh, get that done nice and uh, quickly so that you guys can have um, the tutorials when you're painting your miniatures at home and watching along with us all right here we go tools of course you need the young brass dragon miniature by whiz kids it's a great little sculpt um, and it's one of the few uh, dragons actually that is uh, grounded um, not like because it was bad or misbehaving, but because um, it is not on one of those flight stands. So that's uh, unique about this one. Um, we have some Vallejo brushes we're using, mostly a, a, a zero, a number one, and a number two. Um, Vallejo dry brush for dry brushing all of the fun metallic colors on there. Water pot, of course, some paper towel, and a paint palette, which we're super excited about. Uh, um, and then a bunch of paints. So uh, this will be, we're going to do some real fun stuff with inks tonight. Um, we have the base colors, of course, which are Brassy Brass, Glorious Gold, and Polished Gold. That'll make up kind of the base of it. Um, but a lot of these metallic kind of golden dragons, the bronze, the brass, and the gold, we need to find ways to make them a little different. So we're going to use some red and green ink in order to do that, mix them with, with some black wash um, for some of the uh, shading. The belly uh, and the teeth, we're going to use bone white off white with a wash of sepia. Uh, black is going to be used for the claws, I think, um, as well as some of the spikes along its back. Um, and then we have tan for inside the mouth, orange fire and moon yellow for its eyes, which are very, very small. So we'll try to get in there and not mess that up too badly. And then, of course, heavy brown is the base coat that we'll be using on the belly um, which again will be a lot of fun all right here we go this is the wonderful uh brass drag young brass dragon miniature by whiz kids uh, it comes of course pre-primed as every uh whiz kids miniature pre-primed miniature does or unpainted miniature does i should say um and like i said it is grounded so they come separate from their little base which is kind of nice because you can paint all of the under belly otherwise it would be very fun not fun to uh, paint under that if that was connected so they've actually given you this separate so we're going to just keep that off um, probably for the episode depending on how long it takes us to kind of finish what we got to finish here 
Um, but that is uh, what the Brass Dragon looks like. I'm very excited. As usual, I have my monster manual open. I love, as a purist, to be able to paint it to look like it does from the monster, directly out of the monster's manual. Uh, again, D&D &D purist a little bit. Uh, for that reason, um, I also like to kind of look at its stats and read about it. Um, it they're, they love dry, um, kind of hot temperatures. They're also, it says, gregarious and conversational um, and all of that fun stuff. So we can read some of that while we're letting some of the uh, coats dry and we can talk about that. Also, you can see from here, uh, I'll give you a bit of a closer look there. Uh, you can see from here that they have a greenish kind of tone in the inside of the wing and then a reddish tone on the outside. So we're going to try and um, get that effect as much as possible. And you can see the green kind of in closer to the tail and then the red kind of on the edge of the wings there so um, I'm gonna try and get that done we'll see how that goes um, but I'm excited to try it because it'll be it should be a lot of fun um, yeah okay let's jump right in first things first folks we're gonna use brassy brass as our base um, I couldn't paint a brass dragon without the brassy brass color I just love the uh, name of it so very much. So that is what we're using. Brassy Brass from Vallejo Game Color Line. I'm going to put some on our palette and we're going to go to it. I am going to paint, because it's such a small kind of dragon surface, I'm going to paint the entire thing in brass um, because it'll give it kind of a good undercoat um, and uh, allow us to uh, build up a solid kind of base for everything else that we're painting on this thing. I add a little bit of water just to dilute it, just a touch, and then again, just right up and get right into it here under the wing and along the body. And this should, with this size of brush, I should be able to base coat this in not a lot of time. Everyone, I'm sure will say, as does everyone uh, on a weekly basis, you know, I can't believe you're painting over your monster manual. That is brave. Um, and I'm not very careful with it, folks. I get paint all of this thing, but for me, it just adds a little bit of um, character to the whole process, which is exciting. Also, we're looking for what we should be painting uh, in the next couple weeks on the show. So if you guys have any thoughts on what uh, you want to see from me and from the show, please let me know. Uh, anything from the WizKids unpainted line um, will can qualify so even if it's a little a, a bit of an older um, miniature uh, it's maybe been around a little while one of the earlier waves um, that is absolutely fine too so um, maybe just shout out some in the chat and we can see what we can do uh, there is the bronze dragon which I'd like to also do um, that is a good option and the Bronze Dragon actually is a lot of fun because it's got like green stripes and, and it's got the verdigris kind of effect, but it also has like green in it. So I wanted to, to give that a go and make it look a bit le different than the Copper Dragon that we've already done as well. And that's kind of the key here is I want to be able to paint this differently than the Copper and then the Gold Dragon, which I'm sure is coming in a, in a, later, in a later wave. Um, but uh, but yeah, they all, they all kind of have this goldish sort of color. So how do you differentiate that? Great question, folks. We're gonna try and do that. And I think the way that you differentiate that, because you can do it in like slight different tones of the metallic, but I don't think you get the. Uh, I don't get think you'll get the kind of differentiation you really want by just doing different color metallics. I think if you put, maybe put them side by side, the Copper Dragon is absolutely different than the Gold Dragon, but I think the way to do it easily and the most effectively is to add secondary colors onto the miniature to differentiate it. And for the most part, different colors that actually are represented in those metallic um, or in those metals in real life. I looked at ancient bronze today and thinking that I'll do the Bronze Dragon at some point soon. Um, another announcement as well, you can see the ad in uh, just below me here. Um, 
they're doing, uh, WizKids is doing official paint takes uh, in stores across, I believe, North America to start. Um, very excited about it. And they are using Vallejo paints and shipping a bunch of miniatures, including the Beholder, which you see in that f photo there. Uh, and so they're shipping a bunch of minis. And with Vallejo paints, you'll be painting some miniatures in your local stores to our videos. And so we have taken some of our videos and adapted them to uh, allow for you to be able to do that with friends at a game store. And it's actually quite fun. So if you, if you want to be live um, painting these awesome minis with people and kind of learning those techniques as you go from myself uh, over video, that is your opportunity to do that. So make sure that you guys do that. Thinking about maybe, I know some people have been asking, but I'm thinking about maybe doing the Wyvern next week. Face Spider might be a good spooky mini to paint. Ooh. Yeah, actually, that's a good question because I think the next one, I don't know if it, how close to Halloween it falls, but obviously it's October, so we got to do something spooky. You're right. Next week, we're going to do something spooky. That's absolutely what we're doing. Pragmatese suggested it, and I think that is a wonderful idea. I had forgotten that I had planned to do something Halloween-like for Halloween, so let's do that. I'll have to take a look at the collection that I have and then go from there. Also, folks, I want to work towards creating a schedule, uh, a weekly schedule that we can kind of stick to as much as possible. It allows us to kind of announce it ahead of time, and you guys know which weeks you really want to kind of prep for. Along with that, something that I've, I've been saying for a long time that I really would like to do is to, um, something I really like to do is to set up uh, kind of my paint colors ahead of time so that you folks will have them so you can actually prep and paint live with me uh, while you're watching the show. That'd be a lot of fun too. I haven't had the chance kind of or the ability to do that just yet, but that is something I'd love to, to, to happen. So if you guys like that idea or would like to see that, please leave a comment after the fact um, in the VOD version or in the chat today and we can, you know, the more people that kind of push for it, the more of a priority it becomes. Um, as well too, if you folks are going to PAX, if there's anybody in the chat going to PAX unplugged, in December, um, we will be there. So Realm Smith will have a booth. Very excited about that. Um, we'll be previewing and playing through some of our uh, adventure boxes. So if you are already a subscriber or interested in subscribing or are a Kickstarter backer um, and want to play with the man who um, wrote them, Brandon will be there doing live tutorials from our booth at PAX. So that's a really exciting thing for us. Um, we had a booth at uh, Origins, but we only had a, a table at PAX Unplugged last year. So this year we actually have a full-fledged, like, serious booth, which is crazy um, for us. So we're very excited about that. Uh, and then we'll also, of course, be doing our usual master classes in the Vallejo booth. Three a day, uh, we'll be painting the miniatures, and those will be live uh, on the PAX schedule in the next uh, couple days. So or in the next week or so, I should say. I am just uh, base coating the brass dragon here, the young brass dragon with brassy brass, which makes a lot of sense. This is a really nice color, actually. It's a very rich, rich color. The Vallejo metallics go on really well. Um, almost one coat, one pass gets it done. I did dilute the tail or the paint that I used in the tail a little much and it kind of fell through, so. Not fell through, but kind of uh, ran off. So you gotta be careful when you dilute your paints, especially your metallics. They get really, really watery, so. You wanna do a little dilute it just a touch so it flows really well, but you don't wanna do it so much that um, it's thin and kind of runs off the surface. Okay, I think I'm close to done the brassy brass here. There is going to be areas that I'll have to kind of retouch as I go, but for the most part, we're doing all right. There's always areas when I do these minis 
where after the fact, I'm like, what the heck? How did I miss that massive area of primed miniature? But, yeah, like right there in between the toes. But I always, at the end, kind of rotate the, the mini around, check to make sure I didn't miss any, any spots. Some spots on the back of the wing here. Okay. And like I said, my intention for this one is to use red and green inks to kind of emulate the coloration uh, that the image in the Monster Manual has. Now I have all these little brassy brass flecks on the brass dragon from this. <laughs> I know, I know. Those of you who like to keep your your source books pristine are probably cringing right now. I do this for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna just let that sit and dry for a second. Remember, wash your brushes. Important to do that to maintain their life. All right, let's see. Of course, uh, oh, I forgot to thank our partners. Of course, we wanna thank D&D for hosting us tonight. Uh, it's always such a pleasure and an honor to be hosted on the official D&D um, Twitch channel. So we're incredibly thankful uh, for that and to be a part of that, as well, of course, WizKids, who provides the miniatures uh, that we paint on this show, um, as well as um, Vallejo, of course, for the paints and all of that awesome stuff that they do with us. And they're one of our top sponsors and partners. So. I want to thank Vallejo and all the wonderful people there. Okay, well, you know what? I am going to uh, do a little bit of story time while we allow that base coat to dry here. I just want to make sure I'm tuned into the chat. If you folks have any questions or comments. I didn't know a lot about the Brass Dragon before I started. I knew it was a desert dragon. Um, I didn't know that it breathed fire, much like the gold dragon does. Um, but what I didn't know, which is cool, is it has sleep breath. Don't know if the, yep, the young dragon too. So here's the young brass dragon stat line. Um, and we've got sleep breath. The dragon exhales sleep gas in a 30 foot cone. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or fall unconscious for five minutes. Five minutes is a long time in combat. I'll tell you what. Um, they have multi attack, bite, claw, and of course their breath weapon, which is the fire breath and sleep breath. Um, they're pretty beefy. Challenge six at the young level, and then at the ancient level, of course, they're a challenge 20, which is monstrous. Um, so fun. And then I think they have some... Here we go. Uh, the most gregarious of the true dragons, brass dragons crave conversation, sunlight, and hot, dry climates. Kind of like me, actually. I can... Can relate with the brass dragon. A brass dragon's head is defined by the broad protective plate that expands from its forehead. This is not the brass dragon, that's the bronze dragon. Uh, brass dragon's on the other side. Um, and the spikes protruding from its chin, a frill runs the length of its neck, and its tapering wings extend down the length of its tail. A brass dragon wormling scales are a dull, muddled brown. As it ages, the dragon scales begin to shine, eventually taking on a warm, burnished luster. Its wings and frills are mottled green toward the edges, darkened with age. As a brass dragon grows older, its pupils fade until its eyes resemble molten metal orbs. Oh, that is so cool. So that's interesting, right? Because you can see that this ancient brass dragon here has got the kind of molten metal orbs in there. Uh, it's also got the reddish, greenish uh, closer to the edges, but... Um, the interesting thing for us is that we're we're doing a young brass dragon. So how does that kind of translate uh, for each of you? Boldly talkative, a brass dragon engages in conversations with thousands of creatures throughout its long life, accumulating useful information, which it will gladly share for gifts or of treasure. If an intelligent creature tries to leave a brass dragon's present without engaging in conversation, the bright dragon follows it. If the creature attempts to escape by magic or force, the dragon might respond with a fit of peak using its sleep gas to incapacitate the creature. Wow. 
a little creepy. Uh, when it wakes, the creature finds itself pinned to the ground by giant claws or buried up to its neck in the sand while the dragon's thirst for small talk is slaked. That's great. I love that. I love it. A brass dragon is trusting of creature of, of sorry of creatures that appear to enjoy conversation as much as it does, but is smart enough to know when it is being manipulated. When it happens, the dragon often responds in kind, trending about of mutual trickery as a game. Oh, I love that so much. Very cool. Anyways, all right. So lots of layer action, regional effects, all that fun stuff. I love regional effects for dragons, where the dragons are so powerful that they literally affect the environment around them. The weather and so on. That's so cool. Um, yeah, this seems pretty dry. It's a little wet still. Um, maybe I'll start on the bottom and work my way around. But basically what we're going to do here is I do love the kind of initial sort of color that we have here. It's a bit of a coppery brass color. I'm going to use, and I wouldn't typically do that at this, I'm going to use black ink, sorry, a black wash, watered down quite a bit with some green ink mixed in. The reason I'm going to do that is because, again, that brassy color has this kind of like greenish tone in the shadows. So I'd like to, as much as I can, and the shadows are pretty dark. They're not very rich. So to separate it again from a copper dragon or eventually a gold dragon, um, that is kind of my intention. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, we we'll use some of this green ink for the Kraken we painted a couple weeks ago, and that worked out really well. So I'm going to try and do that as well here. All right, so um, I'm going to take some of this black ink. We're going to add, we're going to dilute it quite a bit here, I think. And we're going to see how that, yeah, I think this is going to work nicely. So we're going to test it here on the wing. Love that color. You can see it's this kind of greeny black color, and I think that is exactly what I need for kind of the... I'm going to do it all over, and then we'll use the red ink after to kind of um, do the rest of the outer, outer wing. Um, now, this might be a bit too green, actually. I think I'm getting too much green in here, so we're going to add some more black ink. Just bring it in around back to some back in black okay. sorry that was unfortunate i apologize i won't do that again all right now this is quite wet so um quite diluted so i want to be careful here but this is going to be an all over wash with this black ink mixed with green ink Like I said, this should give it a really nice kind of brassy tone. I am a little worried because it's so watery that it's going to land on my book. So, folks, I'm going to close the book for a moment. Because as much as I don't mind little specks, I don't necessarily want massive drips of this stuff all over the book. Again, so what I'm doing is I'm just working in this wash. Um, you know, a lot of people ask what the difference between washes and inks are. Um, and I usually talk about it each episode. Um, I know that a lot of beginners watch the show, so I want to make sure that we cover that. But basically, um, a wash is uh, a watered-down pigment or paint that is intended and designed to um, seep into the recesses on a miniature to add depth to that miniature. And so you can see here, um, it's going into all the nooks and crannies, all the folds and the, and, the, and the wings and all of that. And it's gonna give us some shadow in those areas. And that is a very easy, quick way to, uh, with a little effort, to kind of get some delineation and some shadow. I mean, you can see already how nicely this is turning out just by doing what we're doing here. On. Cool. Uh, so that side is done. It's going to be difficult to do the other side without messing up this side, but we're going to try it anyways. 
You know what? I'm going to put it down just for a sec because um, I'm going to have to mix some more wash anyways. And I'm doing, I'm just kind of wiping it down here just so that the, the wash doesn't rest too much at the end of the wings. And then again, um, you don't, you want to put enough wash that it seeps into the recesses and creates shadow. But um, doesn't necessarily clog any of the detail. Again, remember that we're in the chat. If you guys have any questions, co thoughts, comments, anything like that, let us know. Not sure actually that we're live on the D and D um, Twitch right now, which is okay. Something's going on over there. All right. Good stuff. That is going to dry for a second. I am going to mix some more of this wash. I'm going to put a little bit more black this time than I did green last time. Um, because it was a bit much. And the Oh, sorry. So I said half of it. I didn't see the other half. So inks are... Um, an ink is intended to change the surface color of, of an area or of a miniature. Um, so, you know... Um, not so much to add depth and shadow, although it does do that if you put it on heavy enough, but it'll actually tint a surface. So that's kind of the difference. I'll often use inks even after the fact. If I don't like kind of the way that it, a, a, a section of a miniature came out, um, if I feel maybe it's not quite, um, if I feel maybe it's not quite uh, the, the right color or the right tone, then I will use an ink after the fact to make it more red or more green or even more earthy with like a sepia ink or something like that. But now, see, this is an issue, folks. I'm going to show you a little, little problem I have here. The, the base coat that I used in the tail area, you can see, was way too thin and didn't dry properly, and that's what happened. So I didn't wait for the base coat to dry before I added the wash and that's what you'll get. You'll get the fact that basically when you go back in there, well you get an effect where when you go back in there um, you will actually wipe away the base coat because it's not quite dry or adhered to the miniature on the primer. So I've gone back in with some brassy brass and I'm just going to fill that back in. Uh, it happened along the back here too. So we're just going to do that and we're actually going to let it sit to dry and use our little trusty fan to dry that side. The wash looks really nice on the rest of the uh, the rest of the miniature though. It looks really cool. Once this wash is dry, that's going to be kind of the base wash. Then we're going to um, dry brush some uh, glorious gold and then some polished gold just on the edges, just to bring up that luster. As well, um, washes tend to sometimes bring down the um, the glossy, kind of shiny nature of because those those washes are matte. In kind of it doesn't happen so much with the inks, but with the washes, I, I find so sometimes that's why I kind of do the wash in between steps so that I still get the luster from the metallics. And then it, with this, of course, I would finish it with a satin or a glossy varnish to protect it afterwards. I wouldn't use a matte varnish on this because that'll just bring the, the, the shininess of the dragon down. And it won't even look necessarily metallic so much anymore. And that's what you want for your metallic dragons, I would assume. But of course, everything we do here is just suggestions the way that we like to do it. The way that we found, you can see how nice that wash has kind of settled into some of those recesses. Very cool. You know, you put the wash on, you start to really see the detail. It's hard to see sometimes with the primer. My fans had better days, it's a little loud. Is there anybody in the chat that's going to be at PAX Unplugged? Anyone who we will see. All of our kind of, a uh, bunch of our 
Realm Smith folks, the team will be there. Like I said, Brandon, who writes our uh, adventure boxes and who DMs our Order of Dragons Bane, will be doing live um, sessions in our booth, which is very exciting. And um, and Rebecca, who is our moderator and now customer service manager in uh, for our adventure boxes and on our Facebook pages and such, such she's actually going to be attending. So I get to meet her actually for the first time in person, which is kind of nuts that she works for the company and she's a part of the team, but uh, it's the first time that we'll actually get to meet her in person, which is, which is a lot of fun and really exciting. And then I think Ryan will be there and... I think Joel will probably be there. And then the next show after that for us is GaryCon in March, which we absolutely love. That is a that is a mainstay for us. We are almost done with this drying very quickly. These little fans are great, folks. You know, at home, when you're painting, you can just kind of walk away from your miniature and let it dry. But on the show here, we want to get these done within the time period, show you all of the techniques. So these come in super helpful. Okay. No problem, Fragmatees. I say Fragmatees. They don't think it's Fragmite. But they're saying, uh, whoops, got to go to dinner, but we'll return. No problem. All right. So that is pretty good, actually. I don't know if I want to take a chance on that tail yet. Don't know if it's dry enough. But. I am seeing some areas where I'd like to add a little bit more wash so on the top. So I'm going to do that, but the bottom turned out really nice. I'll give you kind of a uh, close-up here. That's exactly kind of the color tinge. And actually, I've never done a lot of that. I haven't used inks mixed with washes to kind of change the, the surface color too much. But that worked out really nicely for me. Okay, so my, of course, my mixture is still wet in the palette. Although I might need some more of it because I think I'm close to out. Yeah, I'm going to use more here. Running a little low. There we go. A little bit of the green ink. A little too watery again. Nope, not too bad. Not too, too bad. And it's not having the effect it did last time, which means it's dried enough as a base coat, and we are good. Add a little bit more here to the wings. And, of course, down the spine, which didn't work last time, but is working now, which is great. Got a little piece of... Dried paint there. There. So now I can let the back of that dry and into the tail while I work on the front. Yeah, the, the head on this one is really cool. Okay, so. Here we go. Um, first things first. First, I think, like I said, I think I'm going to do, I actually wonder if maybe I should do some of the um, red kind of stuff first. No, I'm going to do that after. Uh, I am absolutely going to do that after. I do feel like I do need a bit more 
Um, I do feel like I do need a bit more green on just the inside of these, the way that the kind of image does here. It has a lot of green inside on the wings, and I'm not getting quite the amount that I want. The shadow amount is good, but I feel like the actual, like, um, green kind of feeling that makes no sense it's not easy being green I said I wasn't going to do that in again didn't I um, alright take some of this ink it might be a bit much but I'm going to just feather it so I'm stippling it kind of and feathering it out right in here Actually, that works all right. And close, you can see closer to the body, he's got this green kind of color. So I'm going to feather it into, this is an ink again, it's not paint, but I'm going to feather it into the inside of the wing there, where it hit, touches the body and up along kind of the spine on the wing. That's where I'm focusing it. I do not want it to go too far up the wing. I don't want it to be along there like that. So that'll dry hopefully fairly nicely. Add some more here. Some more ink on this side. Uh, I'm trying, you know, I actually probably diluted this a bit much because it's dripping down onto the body, which isn't a horrible thing uh, because we are giving it a bit of a green kind of tinge. Now the bronze dragon has a green tinge as well. So we want to be careful not to push this green too much, but I find the brass dragon has a green and then red kind of counterpart. So that's okay too. Um, anyways, but you can see how the green is really coming along here. And then I'm also going to do that on the other side. It's a bit wet still, but that's okay uh, for this case because we're already using kind of a wash on the back side. So just painting it along the wing here where it meets the body into the... There we go. And I might want to bring that up a bit more after... We'll see how it looks when it dries. These dragons, there's a lot of kind of sharp, pointy bits that you want to be careful with as you paint. But you can see the contrast between kind of the green, cool greens, and then the warm brass on the rest of the body. It's actually, that's turning out quite nicely. Okay, I'm going to base coat the belly. So we're going to use heavy brown for that. Now, these are the extra opaque colors from Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo heavy brown is, um, again, the, the sorry, the, the extra opaque colors are used basically as um, base coats that allow you to um, basically put down a base coat in like one coat, which is really great. And they adhere really nicely. Don't necessarily need to do this. This isn't a base coat, but I do want it to be solid. So I'm not afraid. I'm trying not to. I'm not afraid to go with this. Now, again, you're like, oh, Jay, you're messing up all that awesome work you just did with the wash. Yeah, it's okay, because then what we're going to do on the bottom here is we're going to use um, a sepia wash afterwards to um, bring some depth and some shadow to that area. Also, I have to be careful here because I don't want to mess up all the ink that I just, or, or mix in all the ink that I just added to the rest of kind of the surrounding area. So, but I, I always like doing this. Uh, on the image, it seems like it's lighter on around the belly. Uh, but it still has a luster. I actually kind of made a, a, a creative decision here and decided that I want this to be a matte 
sort of um, hard scale, non-metallic area, uh, which you can see on some of the other dragons. In the Copper Dragon, we did that way as well, uh, where it's got kind of this um, off-white sort of khaki underbelly, all, like all the um, all of the uh, scales on the underbelly are all this kind of bone color. Uh, that's kind of what we're going for here. I just feel like it gives a bit of differentiate dif differentiation across the body of the the dragon and it makes it a bit more interesting for me that's my take and again everything we do here folks is just kind of like it's basically our recommendation the way that we do things the way that i like to do things i won't even say we i'm sure other people in realm smith would paint this a little differently so these are just kind of my techniques and the things that i like to do to kind of get the result that I want from the Monsters Manual, but you folks can decide to do however you like. You are the boss of your mini, as I have been heard to say. Heard to say? As I have been known to say during our master classes and such. You know, in the end, you need to be happy with how your minis look. So, okay, so this I'm taking right to the edge of the arms here, also coming around like that. And you have to be careful. Uh, well, you don't have to be careful, but I'm being careful here to uh, just get it on the scales that I want to be kind of this color um, and not the metallic ones. So at this point, we've done a lot of really awesome work. I'm going to take a, I'm going to just pause for a second because I can see that there's a hard line where this ink is. So I'm just going to feather this out as it dries. I'm keeping an eye on the ink to see how it's actually drying. So I'm just going to feather that out a little bit because I didn't want a hard brush line, which is why I was trying to feather it in before so it wouldn't be kind of a hard line. Um, and it didn't quite take on this side. You can see that it kind of washed out on that side. So I'm going to have to come back in after I'm done base coating this heavy brown here on the on the belly. And again, picking out certain certain ones. I like to also come up under the, the, the chin a little bit. I like to think too, I mean Dragons are super resilient, super tough, but I like to think that this is kind of the fleshy underside that they have to protect from the lances and such. Cool. Awesome. Okay, that worked. All right, so you can see what I've done there. I've basically undercoated or base coated all of the belly with a heavy brown color. Uh, then I'm going to go through that. And I'm actually going to dry brush it using bone white, and then I'm going to wash it with a sepia wash. Uh, but I'm going to actually, before I do that, while that dries, I'm going to go back in with some green ink again because uh, the green ink didn't quite take on a part of this. So I'm going to go back in, load my brush, touch a water on this ink, and then so it was good on the back here. You can see it kind of, you can see the, the area we did there. It was good on this side, not so good on this side. It kind of ran out, ran off, and I think it's because it was just too wet. So I'm going to do that again. Again, I'm stippling it. I'm not brushing it across. I'm trying not to brush it across because I don't want it to look like a uniform line that basically ends there. So a bit more to that side. There. And then feather this up. 
And I may frankly want to add even more of this later in all these areas. I don't know. It really depends on how it's looking. And that's the thing about inks is that you can work in layers and basically work up the intensity as you go. Okay, that's that. Then um, I am going to use my bone white, which is there. That is the Vallejo Game Color Bone White. I'm going to use a little dry brush that I have here. It's seen better days, but this is a perfect candidate for a dry brush because the it's all kind of used and flayed out. And this actually might be too small, but we'll see. Eh, no, maybe not. So basically what I'm going to do, for those of you that don't know what a dry brush is, and actually I say I'm going to dry brush, but I don't know if this is going to work out. I think I think I may need to, I think dry brush will work. Um, so basically you load your brush with paint, uh, and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel, which seems again a little counterintuitive. Um, and then basically I'm going against the uh, texture on the belly so that I'm highlighting this area with that bone white. I'm highlighting all of this heavy brown that I have. Hey Oso, Matthias says, what a beauty. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Oso, as usual, question. Can you describe what you are doing with the brush when you are feathering? Yes, I can. Absolutely. I will show you. Um, I'll actually explain the feathering technique when I'm doing it in a bit. Um, for the um, red ink. I'll absolutely explain what that is. Sometimes I say techniques like that, and I appreciate when you guys kind of ask to clarify because not everyone knows what a feathering technique is, and so I take that for granted a little bit. So anyways, apologize for that, and I will absolutely explain that a little further. Basically, like I said, I am dry brushing this bone white all along the underbelly. Then once that's done, which it is, and again, dry brushing because it's dry, it dries quite quickly. Um, and so you don't have to wait too long uh, until you do the next step, which for me here, we're going to do a lot of dry brushing at this point, actually. So for me, I'm going to let that belly dry just for a moment. And then I'm going to start to dry brush this glorious gold. Now, I don't want to take away this brassy color that we have here. I really like it. So I'm going to be very selective and careful how much glorious gold I actually put on the miniature because I definitely, like I said, want the brass to be the predominant color. So again, dry brushing, load your brush. Don't want to load it too high because you'll damage it if you load it to the ferrule. And you're going to wipe most of it off. So you're basically depositing uh, dry paint to the miniature. And what I'm doing is I'm going along, gently going along or against the, the grain or the texture on the metallic areas. I do not want to do this again on the um, on the belly because now we've done a lot of work to make sure that the belly is not metallic. Uh, I'm going to do it again along the edges of the wings along the top of the wing here. Some of this ink on here is still wet, so I want to be careful because you definitely don't want a surface that you're dry brushing to be wet. So um, I'm just kind of doing what I can on the edges here. The head a little bit. And then we're going to come in with some polished gold after to just get the edges to really make it shine. This will bring back some of that metallic that we're losing because of the way that the the way that the inks and the washes kind of matted out a little bit, but you can see, there we go. Now you can also see just the detail in that wing and how that looks. It really turned out quite nicely. I really like that inside wing and how that's looking. All right, so now that that's done, 
I can apply my wash to the uh, underbelly, which I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to use sepia wash. Sepia wash is my, my favorite Vallejo wash. I use it for a lot of different purposes. For today, we're going to be using it for the underbelly, and I use it on most dragons that I do, uh, the metallics anyways. I uh, know I used it on the green, I think, perhaps. I know I used it, I want to say on the black dragon, the blue dragon for sure. Um, use it as many places as we can. So uh, that sepia wash is there. I'm going to use a bit of a larger brush to, to paint it on. Dilute it just a touch, some water, and then basically we are going to brush on this sepia wash. And you can see all of a sudden you're getting shadow and it's all kind of blending together. I'm using sepia here because it's going to make it warm again. I want the whole thing to feel warm. I want the brass dragon, it lives in a hot place, hot, dry place. I want it to feel like kind of a warm desert. And so this is, again, adding shadow between those, those plates. But instead of the metal, it's going to be matte color. And then once this is done, once, the, once this wash is dry and it's doing its job, I'm going to, um, I'm going to then highlight each of these scales with bleached bone so they really pop because right now we're subduing a lot of that a lot of that dry brush work we did is kind of disappearing a little bit so we want to bring out that detail again with some edge highlighting which I'll do in a little bit with bleach bone once it's dry there we go on camera it looks all like a little bit the same but you can see kind of when we get really close here How it's a little bit different on the on the bottom there. I almost wonder or wish I had done more khaki maybe there, because that would have maybe come out a bit brighter than uh, going straight to bone white. But we'll see once we get to that bone white stage. Okay. This ink in here is still drying a little bit. I've uh, dry brushed the glorious gold. I think we're ready for the red ink. So we're going to get some red ink here. Again, we have to be careful. We don't know how diluted we want to make it yet. We really want to see how it kind of sits on the miniature before we commit too much. So I'm just going to get a little bit on the brush here because this red ink is actually quite, um, quite opaque. And the Vallejo inks tend to be, so I just want to be a little careful. We're just going to put a little bit on here. Now, the technique we talked about earlier was feathering. What I mean by feathering is this. See how strong that is? Super strong. So it's actually a bit too strong for me. I'm going to wet it down a little bit more. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of black ink to that. And this is when you kind of like feel it out see what you need and i just realized you know what it's actually a little too bright bright red i don't want that and the red wash is actually a little too kind of pink and dark so i want somewhere in the middle so it's more of kind of like a crimson almost burgundy color like this so i'm gonna do this and basically what i'm doing is i'm i'm um feathering it down and lifting my brush with a stroke like this so that you're blending it a little bit rather than you can also do it this way as well but basically blending it a little bit so that you're not getting a lot of so that it blends is really what it is but you can see what I've done there and I've actually now um, it came on really strong so you can also kind of use your finger which is what I like to do um, to wipe and blend it a little bit once it's on the miniature, but that is pretty cool. And you're getting kind of this, the, the, the right kind of feeling on that. Do it along the edge here. 
but I don't want to brush the red on like this because it'll just be a straight line. That's not what we want. We want to kind of stipple, which is kind of poke at it so that it blends, as well as kind of pull it up and in the directions that we want. But that turned out really nice. Go on the back here. It's basically coming coming on, on one in one coat. And that's kind of characteristic of that brass dragon. You can see from the from the subject matter. Now, again, that line's a little too too sharp for me or too defined. So I'm just going to use my finger a little bit here. You can also use another brush if you don't want to get ink on your fingers. But um, I just do that so that it so that it blends a little bit more. So you can see I'm also stippling on the edge here. If I have an area that I can't kind of brush on or um, feather on, I'm just going to stipple it. And actually, the stippling is kind of working a little bit better than the, than the, than the brushing was. And I'm also finding that less paint on the brush is working out better than more paint on the brush. It's a lot more subtle that way. So you can see how that looks there very cool and again still getting that same kind of effect that I, that I wanted from the monster manual so you're getting this really neat sort of reddish um, yeah so I'm not using a wet palette uh, geek movie house asked um, I've actually haven't used a wet palette a lot in my um, in my years of painting just because it never really happened. I just come from an old school, I guess, approach. I have tried it uh, and it's it's cool. I actually have a wet palette coming from another, from a painting company that released one that they want me to kind of give it a go and see what I think. Uh, and I'll feature it on the show and let you guys know what I think. Um, I think they're out of Europe, so I'll, 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 we'll do that and then we'll, we can kind of, I'll, I'll review it and let you folks know what I think. Uh, wet palettes are great for blending and keeping your keeping your paint lasting a bit longer. Now I'm not getting the same kind of intense red on this side, so I think the red on this side is really intense. So I want that same kind of effect. So I'm just gonna come into my palette a bit more, get a bit more here. Like I said, I'm finding that when it's a little drier, it's a bit better. It goes on a little bit better. You have a bit more control than when it's really wet. There, that's better. Okay, there it is. So that is the red on there. I'm actually quite happy with that way that I turned out. That looks super cool, in my opinion. These Vallejo inks are awesome. Okay. That is the red to green transition that I was looking for. Now. Okay. Wipe it off a bit more here. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, let me just see here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in now with um, glorious gold, and I'm going to pick out some areas that I'd like to delineate on those because now I've added that these spines here in the subject matter go basically brass all the way up. So I'd like to continue that kind of motif. So I'm going to do that. Sorry, just checking the chat here real quick. Make sure I'm answering everything you guys are asking. Okay. So um, with a bit of a larger brush, 
Go back in here with some glorious gold. Now, hopefully the glorious gold works. If it's a little too gold-ish, I might use the brassy brass again. But I'd like to really bring out these spines here and make them stick out. So I'm just basically going to go up the spine, each one with uh, some glorious gold. Glorious gold, I think, is working out nicely. So I'm going to keep that color for now. Providing a really nice contrast to the inside of the wing here. There we go. Kind of skipping a level here. I should have gone Brassy Brass first and then Glorious Gold, but this is actually working out all right. And then I'm going to get the little ones in the tail here. Perfect. And you can see how that's kind of added a bit more to that. I'm also going to go along the edge here on this spine just to make sure that that still looks kind of brass. But you can see how that's popping really nicely. Um, I'm going to have to do that on the inside. We still have an hour left, folks. So we've got lots of time to do lots of fun stuff here. These metallic dragons, I find, are actually very quick to, to paint. Very quick to paint. The chromatics actually tend to take a little bit longer. Is there any, anybody out there who's watching us for the first time tonight? I always like to find out. Uh, if we have newcomers, I'd love to say hi. Also, if you folks have any suggestions on the channel, what we can do better, what you like, what you maybe like don't don't like so much, or we can improve on, please you know sound off and leave comments. If if you're watching VOD after the fact. As usual, the VODs will be on the uh, official D&D YouTube channel sometime after uh, it airs on Twitch, as well as on the Realmsmith YouTube channel at Realmsmith, or sorry, youtube.com slash Realmsmith. Um, but if you're looking for the video shortly after it's aired, for the week after it's aired, it, it will be on our Twitch, on the Realmsmith Twitch. So you can catch them there if you want to watch kind of shortly after they've aired. Uh, it usually takes us a little bit of time to get them up on, on YouTube. So if you can't wait, you can watch it again on the Twitch channel. All right. This is going well. Again, just bringing back some of that metallic on the spines and the edges that we kind of covered with that. With those inks. Very cool. Kind of using the edge of my brush on here because I don't want to get it in the detail or in the crevices. I still want that green kind of black wash to shine through I did that a bit much, so it's running off. So I'm just, I kind of 
dry off my brush and then whisk off the pull the basically pull the the paint off the mini. Oftentimes that works very nicely for fixing little mistakes and like runoffs or whatever. Okay. All right, that is the inside of the wings. Again, I just wanted to pick out the the spines again. I have to do the out the sorry the inside of the wing on the other side, but it's looking quite quite cool. Quite cool. All right. There we go. Awesome. Okay. There. That worked out well. I like it. Okay. Now that is drying. I am going to go in and I'm going to edge highlight all of the, um, oops, all of these little plates, scales on his belly, or her belly, not sure yet what she is, or he is, okay, um, it's belly, for now, now, this bone white is still wet in my palette, and that's the other reason I don't really had much use for a wet palette yet, is because the Vallejo paint actually stays wet quite long in the palette, a lot longer than other brands I've used, which I love about it. So I'm going through and I'm adding kind of a, a little bit of a thin line of bleach bone on some of these scales just to pick them out a little bit. Sometimes I get into my own world here, folks. It's so kind of um, what's what I'm looking for? Kind of therapeutic and cathartic. Then I get into my old world and I forget. Hey, wait a second. There's people out there that you should be talking to. But it's so calming for me. You can see what I'm doing now. I'm just picking out these these scales. I may actually go back in. It's a little stark. I should have worked it up more from some different colors. Um, I should have worked it up to like a khaki and then the bone white kind of as the final highlight or maybe even an off-white as a final highlight because this is a bit drastic. But uh, I might add just a little bit of uh, sepia wash over this just to kind of bring it back down and blend it a little bit better. I think that'll look nice. But I did feel like they weren't quite sticking out as much as I'd like to. Basically, all I'm doing is a thin line along the edge of each of the scales. And then I'm probably going to add, like I said, a sepia wash to dull it down just a touch. Because it's a bit much. There. Well, you can see how that's added a 
really stark kind of highlight, which, as mentioned, is a bit much. Okay, so we'll let it dry before we add another sepia wash on there. I am going to do the inside of the mouth now. Grab some tan here. We're flying through here, folks. I always do this. I always get her done much quicker than I anticipated. And then we got time to kill. I'm actually coming down with a little bit of a cold, I think. My throat's been bugging me, so maybe if we finish a little early, that's okay, too. Okay, so I am using tan. That is uh, not brassy brass. From Vallejo, game color. I'm going to do the, the roof of the mouth in this color, and I'm also going to do the tongue in that color like that. Just so that you can see that the tongue is tongue colored. <laughs> and then, now that I've done that, I'm going to go in with some bleach bone. It's not bleach bone. Wrong company. Bone white, <laughs> and uh, and and hit all of the teeth that are along here. Now these teeth are really tiny, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run the brush along the. Oh, see, messed it up already. Run the brush along the top, just picking out what teeth I can see, being careful not to get it onto the rest of the mini, and then we're gonna use sepia wash which we typically always use on teeth after the fact there we go now, there's just a hint of teeth on this guy so that's all we need really and the sepia wash is probably going to hide that quite a bit so we probably don't want to add too much wash because we do want it to stand out. I may even add some bone white in there. Okay. All right, now the belly is going to be dry. Um, so I am going to, again, there's already still sepia wash on my palette that is wet. So the hell rocks that way. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of CPU wash again um, just to bring down the intensity of those highlights I just did on the belly because they're a bit much. I should have built that up a bit more. but I, tr I try and kind of limit the colors to minimum colors as much as possible just to make it a bit more doable at home. A little easier on the wallet for you folks to, to, to kind of get the same effects that we are. But as you can see, that that's just dulling it down just a touch. But I would have probably gone through two or three, maybe even four colors on that instead. Yeah, three or four colors probably to, to work that up a bit more subtly, but it works. Okay. good then next we have um i'm gonna do let's see here i might do the eyes actually because we're almost done folks it's crazy um i'll do the eyes and then i will do the black spines which he has kind of like gold spines there oh i didn't do red on the back i'm gonna go back to the red ink for just a second folks because I'd like to add some red ink to the, the here along the back of his neck. He's got a frill that should have some red on the edge of it, which would look really cool. There. I might even, I'm going to do it all along his spine on the back as well. And that'll help that to just stand out a bit more and a little cooler, I think really comes down to coolness. 
What's the cool factor here, folks? There, that looks cool. Nice. Okay. Now, going to use orange fire for the base of the eyes. Don't need a lot of this, just a tiny bit using my zero brush, which is my finest brush that I have here. Make sure that it flows nicely so that I'm not trying to jam it in there because I don't have enough paint on my brush. Uh, let's do a little bit of a close up here. Um, and I'm just gonna dot inside. Again, they start to develop eyes that look like molten metal in the socket so i just want to there just add a little bit of orange fire in there and i think i might also add a little bit of um, moon yellow which is kind of next and then i will add a little bit of sepia wash in there just to give it a bit more because now it's really stark. I don't want it to be. There, there's a little bit of moon yellow in the middle, like that. And then, um, I might actually, I still have some wet black wash. So I'm actually going to add black wash just, I'm going to paint it just around the edge here so that that orange really sticks out. Yeah, so I've just painted it around the socket so that orange really kind of shines through that. Kind of like it does in the source material. Okay. Looking cool. Huh. It turned out all right so far. Okay. I wiped off the paint on the edge of the tongue, so I'm just going back in there to fix that. Once that tongue dries, I am going to use a little sepia wash on the tongue just to give it that groove in the middle of the tongue, just to give it a bit more depth. Um, this guy's looking pretty much done. Uh, they do have the, the they have black on the tips of the wings and on the spikes on the frills. His claws in, in the source material are like metallic colored, but I actually like the contrast when you add a black to a metallic dragon claws so I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna go through and pick out all the little claws here because I think that would be cool just paint some nails just paint some nails living the dream Alright, so that is those. Then I'm also, I am going to make the just the tips of these spikes on his back black as it shows in the source material. Again, it's just going to add a little bit of interest to, and it'll make me feel good when I look at them. I'm like, yeah, that looks just like it does in the monster manual. That's kind of my, my thing. Okay. Um, the, on the tips of his wings, like these little guys here, I'd say, I'll do black. He's got little spikes in the monster manual that are black on his wings. So I'm just going to do that one and over here on this one. Because I like to break up the 
monotony a little bit. Also going to do the ones on the very tips of his wings. Now, just this part that kind of faces backwards, that spike. Yeah, that looks cool. I'll do it again on this one. Just I love the contrast of the black on the brassy color. Or even on the silver dragon is really cool too. There we go. And then they're supposed to have them on all these spikes on his wings. Um, but on the wings, they're not very fine, so I don't know how that will look. I don't think I'm going to do it on the wings. Because I don't think it'll look great. Awesome. Almost there, folks. We're almost done. Half hour early. And then maybe I can rest a little earlier. Um, try and get rid of this scratchy throat I have. Okay, a little bit of CP wash again. Gonna put a little bit of that in the tongue. There, you can just see that it's picked out the detail in the tongue. That's exactly what I wanted. That's all I needed. Actually, you know what? I am gonna go back in and maybe just add a little bit to the teeth, see if it hides them. Okay, it's not. It's just actually doing what I want it to, which is to uh, delineate them a bit because they're just a big, massive bone white right now. So that of that add a little bit into the sockets like that perfect folks that's the young brass dragon i'll give you one quick look at it again give it a bit of a turn there it is Thanks, Oso. Oso says it looks really cool. I've got the red coming from the green, just like the Brass Dragon in the book does. Um, and it's going to look different. It's going to look different from my Copper Dragon I've already done, from the Silver Dragon I did, um, from a Gold Dragon when they release one, and um, obviously from the um, Bronze Dragon that we'll be probably doing soon. I just wanted to make sure that we had that reddish to green color and we were able to accomplish that with Vallejo inks which is a lot of fun. I love the way that the back of the wings look here. That worked out really nicely and super cool. He is done. So what I would do next uh, in the order is I would take this base and I don't necessarily have the colors here to do it uh, right now but I would make this look like a cracked kind of desert earth uh, and then of course I would glue it to here he is like the only dragon of all of them that is um, grounded, like I said, that does not have. So I would kind of put him on the base here and then uh, put him on the black WizKids base that you typically get. I like doing that. Some people like leaving them. I mean, this base is probably big enough for him to kind of sit on his own, but I actually like to have it on the black base because then it gives me spatial awareness for the maps when we're doing our live streams and playing our, our kind of our home game. Um, you know what? I am going to do the base right now. Why not? We have more than half an hour. I'm totally going to do that. Believe it or not, the heavy brown that I already have in my palette from Vallejo is still wet. So I'm just going to add a little bit more to add to that. And we're going to base coat this, this base here. Basically, we're going to go around here. Uh, I am not going to paint the um, the holes that are meant for the feet to go into uh, and to glue into because you want to make sure that it, it uh, uh, adheres to the primer and the plastic, not the paint, because it won't do very well. But then I just get some crazy glue or super glue or whatever you want to call it. And then we will... Um, 
I'm going to do this a little bit easier with a larger brush here. Yeah, but you don't want paint sticking to paint. You want paint sticking to plastic. I mean, for, for in this case, it comes pre-primed, so you can't really stick to, to true plastic, but you can at least, as much as you can. So I'm just going to go heavy brown on this, and then I'm probably going to do a black wash, and then I'm probably just going to dry brush it with um, bone white, I think. I think that's the plan. Here we go. <laughs> As I'm holding it, I am wiping off the paint on the other side. That is the one issue with pre-primed stuff. Sometimes you get it's a little uh, glossy, or or um, so you just got to be careful, folks. That you will pull the paint off it if it's still quite wet and hasn't cured over the primer on these minis. So it can be a bit frustrating, but um, see, I just wiped it off. Ah. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put that down. Let that dry for a second while I wait that out. Uh, one thing I didn't do, actually, folks, is I didn't use the polished gold on this. I'm going to actually go back and do that. Uh, the polished gold is the kind of the brightest gold color that Vallejo has in their game line, game color line. Of course, you can mix it lighter, but I'm just going to use a dry brush here. I'm going to get a little bit of polished gold. It's a really kind of bright goldy color. And all I'm going to do is get it right on the very edges of some of the, not over the black, of some of the areas that would be the brightest. So tip of the nose, top of the plate on his head. Kind of on the elbows and knees, the haunches, some of the top areas here on the wings. Again, you don't want to cover up the black areas that you did. You just, I'm just kind of bringing back some of that luster that we may have lost because of the dry brushing or the, sorry, not the dry brushing because of some of the washes and such. Just bringing a little bit of that back, especially on the face there. Okay, that worked. Just wait for this base to dry a bit more. I'm actually going to place it down here and on the surface and paint it. Just touch up the areas that got mucked up by my hands. I'll use my fan, we'll dry that, and then we'll add a wash. Don't get your fingers in the fan, it doesn't feel great. Drying nicely. So folks, what do we want to do next week? Do we want to do the Wyvern? Which is the larger, the larger miniature, that'll be fun. Do we want to do the Bronze Dragon? And you folks can sound off in the chat, and we can decide what we'll be doing next week. Options are Wyvern, Bronze Dragon. I had another dragon upstairs, I thought, maybe. Uh, or any of the others. Brown, uh, bronze sounds cool. Okay. Grave Mistake says Bronze. I like it. The bronze is fun because it'll be like it'll be like this, so pretty much almost the same base. Because again, there's only so much metallic differentiation in color you can get. But then we're gonna do like green stripes and um, a lot more greens, no reds. That's what sets the the bronze the brass aside from the bronze. Bronze or wyvern also says maybe we split up the metallics by doing the wyvern in between. So maybe. We do the wyvern, and then we do the bronze. What do you think, folks? Exactly. Grave Mistake says, get the patina going. Uh, and that's what I would do on the bronze. I would have, I would use the verdigris for it, for sure. 
like we did on the bronze dragon. Uh, that's right, on the copper dragon in an earlier episode. Actually, our first episode was a copper dragon. But we'll bring the verdigris back out to get some of that patina going. Okay, so this is pretty much dry. So now that that's dry, I am going to put the fan down and I am going to brush on a black, I think I want a black wash. Don't think sepia is going to be enough. Mm, let's try sepia first. Let's get sepia going first here. Yeah, all right. Sepia might do the trick. I am doing it here so that I'm not touching it and just messing up. Just gonna paint it on the uh, on the surface here on the table. I know you can't see it very well. I'll pick it up once it's dry, and you folks can have a look at what I did. If you can't, it just looks like a pile of something <laughs> on the on the table right now. I like it. Okay, so again, we're going for desert in this scenario. Because again, brass dragons, dry, hot temperatures, that's what they love. So I've let that settle. We're going to use the trusty fan again. And then I'm going to, let's look at the stats again a little bit. Okay, so I'm thinking, uh, I know people were asking for the wire room before, so I'm thinking maybe we do... Um, wyvern next week so we're not doing two gold kind of metal dragons and then the week after we'll do bronze does that work for everyone just getting our dragon on folks and then again if there's any other thoughts minis that you'd like to see painted please let us know even in the comments uh, i'm going to try and work on a four-week schedule so show I'll, I'll basically talk about all the minis will do in the next couple weeks. Uh, or maybe for November I'll start doing that. We'll see. We're pretty close to November. Oh, that's what we're doing. We have to do a spooky mini. So I'll do a spooky mini for Halloween. And then in November I will start with the Wyvern. And then maybe we'll do the Bronze Dragon. And then we'll, we'll do that. So in the next couple weeks you guys will get the ones that you're asking for. I want to see some of these regional effects. I said earlier, I love, I love the regional effects in, in uh, for for some of the dragons because it's just this, it's the idea that these dragons are so powerful when they're ancient uh, or adults uh, that um, they affect the environment around them. The environment kind of like it's just really cool for me. Anyways, uh, the region containing a legendary brass dragon's lair is warped by dragon, the dragon's magic, which creates one or more of the following effects. Tracks appear in the sand within six miles of the dragon's lair. The tracks lead to safe shelters and hidden water sources, while also leading away from areas that the dragon prefers to remain undisturbed. That's cool. So basically he's helping you as you get closer. That's awesome. Images of large or smaller monsters haunt the desert sands within one mile of the dragon's lair. These illusions move and appear real. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. These illusions that move and appear real, although they can do no harm, a creature that examines an image from a distance can tell it's an illusion with a successful DC. Yeah, that's cool. Um, whenever a creature, so mirages basically, whenever a creature with an intelligence of three or higher comes within three feet of water source within one mile of the dragon's lair, the dragon becomes aware of the creature's presence and location. Holy, that's cool. That's really cool. It's awesome. Layer actions. A strong wind blows around the dragon. Each creature within 60 feet must succeed on DC 15... Strength saving throw would be pushed 15 feet away. 
desert sands. That's cool. A cloud of sand swirls ab about in a 20-foot radius sphere on a point the dragon can see. And I love dragons. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about prized treasures. Brass dragons covet magic items that allow them to converse with interesting personalities. An intelligent telepathic weapon or magic lamp with the genie bound inside it are among the greatest treasures a brass dragon can possess. Brass dragons conceal their hordes under mounds of sand or in secret places far from their primary layers. They have no trouble remembering where their treasure is buried and therefore have no need for maps. Adventurers and wanderers should be wary if they happen across a chest hidden in an oasis or a treasure cache tucked away in a half-buried desert ruin, for these might be parts of a brass dragon's hoard. So cool. All right. Just enough time to almost dry the layer of sand that we have, or the mound of sand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bone white, and I'm going to mix that with some heavy brown because we don't have a khaki or anything here or some of the kind of like lighter colors that we would have for sand. So uh, I'm going to mix some of that together. Yeah, it's a bit of a khaki color. That's good. Dry brush again. Load your brush. Wipe most of it off. You don't want streaking, which is actually what I'm getting. So I haven't wiped enough off. Um, so basically going against the texture, against the grain, and I am just going to dry brush this. Now it's coming a little kind of light, kind of a white color, which I don't necessarily want. Um, it's a bit too light. So I might add a little bit of yellow in there, actually. I have yellow in my palette still, so let's see if that works. There we go. Ah, it's a lot more kind of warm, sandy. There we go. That should actually do it for that. I, you know, typically I would use maybe like a Vallejo environment effect, um, kind of a sand texture, and also add some of that on there as well. Uh, and this isn't quite dry yet, but you can kind of see how the brass dragon will then be glued onto or into these areas, like so. And then he'll sit in the desert waiting to help wary adventurers who approach. I'm going to put this down before I wreck it. Check it before I wreck it. And uh, oh, I did it again with the dad jokes. All right. OK, so I am going to wrap up a little early today, folks, just because uh, I should probably get some rest. I'm not feeling 100%. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we still did the show. So. Uh, what I'll do is next week we will do um, next week we will do something spooky. Probably um, I'm not gonna say, but stay tuned. We will choose something very spooky. I've got some ideas. This is the Fomorian we did last week. Uh, that VOD uh, will be should actually the episode still should be on our uh, Twitch, and we will have it also on our YouTube channel soon. I will upload that as soon as I can. Um, so that is the Fomorian. And then we also have, uh, in November, I'm going to release the whole month, hopefully in advance, so you folks know which creatures are coming and what you can expect from us. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Fragmatees and Grave Mistake and Oso as usual. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for all that you've done. want to thank our partners, of course, D&D, WizKids, and Vallejo for this. Catch this show live at PAX Unplugged. We will be doing master classes. You can sit with me, myself and others and paint minis just like this um, during PAX for a small fee. So uh, come by the Vallejo booth. Um, I think the way we're going to do it is 
sign up will happen each day of the show. Come to the Vallejo booth, you sign up, you pay your, your, your admission fee to the event, and then you can come in and we will show you how to paint some awesome stuff and have some fun together and some chats and all of that greatness that will occur at Pax Unplugged. So if you're in the Philly area, December 5th to 8th, I believe, um, do that. Also, we have a booth there for Realm Smith. We'll be selling Vallejo product as well as doing live uh, playthroughs of our adventure crates, our boxes. Still calling them crates. Adventure boxes, uh, which are there. And uh, if you did miss our Kickstarter, you can still pre-order some of the items from our Kickstarter on our pre-order store at realmsmith.tv slash kickstarter will take you to our kickstarter page and then you can hit the miss the campaign button and that will take you to our pre-order store and you can check out all that fun stuff that you can still jump in on um uh, for a limited time very limited some of them is are only available for the next week and then uh, we have some other items as well so check it out thank you so much uh, if you want to follow us on the on all of the socials we are uh, at slash realmsmith tv and then twitch and youtube we are, are youtube.com and uh, twitch.tv slash realmsmith thank you everyone you guys have a wonderful week and we will see you tomorrow night for the first time in a long time for uh, order of dragon's bane uh, dm'd by brandon perkins and myself playing the uh, gold dragonborn monk Crichton, and then in a week from now we will have another awesome um halloween episode of um Nolzer's marvelous tutorials for you and that'll be a lot of fun take care guys you guys have a good day